In this video I'm going to talk about one of the last phases of modeling which is mesh cleanup. Now typically you can do this uh, during UVing. You can also do it in line as you make things. You can go ahead and clean them up and the more you model the sort of the better your geometry will be in the end anyways. So you'll find problems, you'll see things as you go and you'll get rid of them. But undoubtedly something's going to slip past and this is just a way to catch those things. So during UVing you might notice oh I have an extra interior face in here that I want to delete and just Get, get that out of there. So there's going to be cleanup that happens along the way, but you can actually save yourself some time by doing a mesh cleanup before you get into UVs because certain UV operations won't work if you have bad topology. So for instance, if you're trying to unfold something that has bad topology, a lot of times it would just completely break. Um, sometimes if you're trying to do a prescale to the world and you have bad geometry, it won't know how to deal with it, and it'll just mess everything up. So you can save yourself some hassle and some time by doing a mesh cleanup ahead of time. So I'll just come into mesh cleanup here, and I'm just going to go ahead and reset these settings so we start straight from the default. So you have two different options here. You can either have Maya do it for you, or you can do it yourself. I'd recommend you do it yourself. Just let Maya make a selection for you and you clean up the problems. Uh, number one, that will help you be a better modeler because you'll see the problems that you have created and sort of start figuring out how to avoid creating those problems in the future. So you'll become a more efficient and better modeler by sort of being aware of the issues you're creating. Uh, number two, Maya doesn't always necessarily fix things properly like it it does it does right a lot of times but it will mess things up sometimes just it won't know how to interpret something it'll just try to fix it some way and it will be wrong so you can eliminate that by adding your own brain to the mix and fixing things the way they actually need to be fixed so the scope simple enough either if you want to do it on a subset or to everything and um, then I'll get into the two different things that it does so it will either tessellate, which means basically triangulate any problem that it finds in this category, or it will remove the problems that it finds in this category. So I'll just go ahead and step through these. Uh, Four-sided faces are quads. That's good geometry. There's no particular reason to tessellate that. If you want to tessellate, you can only or triangulate. You can go to mesh triangulate basically at any point in time. Um, you can also do that. Typically, in a lot of exporters, you can do that. Um, as long as they're using Maya's triangulator, you're not going to have a problem. You could also just just before you do an export, save it as a different scene and triangulate that one or something like that. So I'm not going to turn that on. Uh, faces with more than four sides. Uh, we have these, or I have these, I guess, all over this mesh. So this right here, that's an end gone. As you can see here, it's one face. It has 16 triangles. So that's a big end gone. So typically, this is what you'll see: one face, one face, two triangles. So this is a big fat end gone. But it's not causing a problem. It doesn't need to deform. There's no particular issue with it. So I'm just going to leave it alone because I don't want to look at it like this. That's just ugly and hard to look at. So I don't want to deal with that. I could, of course, come through here and grab out these and turn this into a quadrangulated mesh, which is cleaner and a lot easier to look at, but I also don't really need to spend the time to do that. I understand what this shape is looking at it just like that. So I have no particular reason that I need to triangulate that this at this point in time. I can just deal with that when I get to it um, just before export. So concave faces are faces, I'm going to just get this out of the way, that are basically, um, it has a cut into it. I'll just do a demonstration on this one so that makes a little bit more sense. Um, okay, so that'll be fine. Looks like I'm going to have to redo those cleanup options. So pull that in and then just for instance delete that. So this is now a concave face because the, the sort of area of this face is being cut into by one of the verts that's not connected on the other side. So what can happen is if you triangulate this in another um, in an engine or something like that it might think that that vert that vert and that vert need to be a triangle and so that would give you a face that overlaid what, where it's supposed to be uh, a gap. So that's why you might want to watch out for um, concave faces like that. So I'll just keep uh, I guess popping this up and, and fixing these problems. So uh, Faces with holes. I have talked about this but I'll go ahead and uh, talk about it again really quickly. So this is a face with hole right here. I did this with a boolean and typically you will cause these problems with booleans. So I knocked this cylinder straight through this and I didn't connect any of these edges to these edges right here. Now this would not be um, a face with hole if for instance I had this cut 
just one cut like this from that vert to that vert and then I did that boolean it would be connected to, in two places and it would be totally fine. Uh, now if you do want to fix this uh, and the reason you might want to fix this I'll go ahead and say that first is when this gets triangulated it might try to triangulate this in a really weird way and end up covering this hole up. So and in fact you can simulate that just by doing an interactive split in Maya. So if I were to go from that edge to this one and then press enter it'll sort of fall apart. So you see it thinks the border edge goes up here and connects up there and comes back down. It's just like it's really confused. So the way you would actually fix this in Maya is select the face and do a triangulation and then you'll end up with this totally happy but triangulated face. I could then go ahead and come through here and for instance grab um, all these edges and I'm just going to use this paint selection so that I, I don't accidentally select through to the to the other side. And basically if I just had any two um, of these edges not selected, and this is just going to be easier, just go ahead and select them, deselect them like that. Um, so that's now not a face with a hole. It's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with this face. Maya is happy with it. Maya won't report any problem except for the fact that these are still n-gons. It's not a face with a hole anymore. But again, much like all the other ones that I've dealt with, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to be triangulating with Maya anyways, so I can leave that as a face with hole. It's not going to cause any problem whatsoever. But that's how you would fix a face with hole if you needed to. Okay. And non-planar faces. So I'm as if you can, can't tell, I'm just going to leave all these off because I don't see any particular reason to triangulate at this point. So none of these are going to be on. I just want to explain what they all are. So I'm going to go ahead and create uh, poly here. I'll just do it with one. Okay, so if I were to grab any one of these verts and for instance move it down, now I have a non-planar face. So basically you see that there's no possible way that you can connect these four points using a flat object. So this is now being um, cut by an edge across here. And you can see that that's how Maya wants to do it, is it wants to make it sort of this hip feel like this. So in fact it already sort of has been done, I'm just not seeing it. So if I just set this up to triangulate, now I can see that's exactly what Maya planned to do. The reason you need to be concerned about this is if you're not triangulating in Maya, if you can triangulate in the engine or something, then you could actually flip the triangle edge and simulate what another engine might do to this. So see how different that shape is? It became this valley instead of having that hip. So that's just based on how that's getting triangulated. Again, if you triangulate with Maya, what you see is what you get in terms of the form. You're going to get what, what it looks like it's going to be if you triangulate here. If you triangulate somewhere else, you know, you're up to whatever differences there may be between those two systems. So it could easily triangulate that way and create a problem on your mesh. So that's why you might want to be aware of that as well. Now these are the ones that I actually do want to do. So lamina faces, this is easy enough to explain so I'll just explain it. Basically it's two faces that are sitting directly on top of each other with all merged verts. So in other words you have two faces represented but you have only four edges for instance. So um, this is a way that you can go ahead and just kill one of those uh, faces so that you don't have doubled up geometry that would z-fight or any number of other problems. So we do want that on. Non-manifold geometry is another one here. Let me go ahead and uh, this is easier to show with a demonstration, I think. Okay, I don't know how many times I'm going to fall for that problem there where I think the options are going to stay open, but they don't. All right, so non-manifold, if I were to grab this and do an extrusion on it and pull that up, that's non-manifold geometry. So it doesn't have any uh, depth to it whatsoever. It's three faces sharing one common edge. This is non-manifold and bad geometry. If you wanted to create that, typically what you'd want to do is do something with depth. So if I just insert an edge loop like that, grab that face and do an extrusion on that, then I have good geometry. So you can see that's all. That's um, no interior faces or anything like that. So this is totally fine. Let me go back in here. Okay, so 
I do want that. I do want non-manifold non geometry. And non-manifold geometry is what I just demonstrated. Uh, non-manifold normal check means basically the normals are facing the, the common direction. So if I were to reverse this, for instance, see how this border edge gets put around here? Uh, it's not sharing verts now, or wouldn't be sharing verts around here, because the normal on this one faces in, and this one faces out, and this one faces out. So they're, they're not aligned. So having this check turned on will find that sort of a problem if you have just reverse normals. Again, I would typically recommend you model with two-sided lighting turned off and that will help you really easily find those sorts of things anyways and just fix them manually even before you get to this this cleanup phase. Um, okay, now let's see, uh, edges with zero length, in other words an edge appears to be a vert, which obviously you don't want. Faces with zero geometry area, in other words a face that is the size of a vert, which is, means basically it has no size whatsoever. So we'll get rid of those as well. This last one is just about UVs. Since we haven't started UVs, it's not an issue. It basically means there's no UVs or it's tiny, uh, but we don't care about that. So this is actually ready to go now. I'm just going to set it to select, do all my polygonal objects. These are the settings I would recommend you do, and then just click select, or clean up. And this is what I end up with. It looks like I have one problem. So if I just press W, that will show me where the problem is. If you have a lot of problems, then you're going to have to sort of search through individually and find what you have as an issue. Wireframe is going to be easiest. So now I can see it's got an edge selected. It's on a single vert. So basically, that means I just need to merge that right there. So that just didn't get merged. So just merge to become one. And that's it. So now I should be able to run cleanup again. And typically, this is what you do with cleanup: is just keep running it until you don't have any problems. So click cleanup. You, this is what you should see, and this means you're done. You don't get a congratulations message or anything. All you get is result nothing, and nothing will be selected, and that means you have a clean object. So this is now actually ready to go and get started doing UVs.